Hi there. So I just like to uh, talk a little bit about uh, an upgrade we're making to our AQM65, Dust Sentry, and AQS1 particle monitor measurement. The upgrade uh, is an upgrade to the optical measurement module or the nephilometer optical measurement module. Uh, this upgrade does not affect uh, the profiler optical measurement system. It only affects the particle monitor measurement system. The change is a part change to the optical measurement module. Uh, the original optical measurement module was the 8180 optical measurement module from MET1 and we're upgrading that optical measurement module to the 82850 optical measurement module. You can see here that the uh, original 8180 optical measurement module and the new replaced 82850 optical measurement module look almost exactly the same. They're the same shape, the same size, and that makes it really easy to fit the new 82850 optical measurement module into an existing AQM65 or dust sentry or AQS1. You can identify the new part by looking at the part code designation on the label. Uh, here we have the original 8180 part code designation and here we have the uh, new uh, 82850 part code designation. You'll also notice that there's a subtle difference between these two components uh, based upon the electronic and the data connections. The original 82850 engine uh, has this 8-pin Molex connector, which uh, both powered and controlled the data communications, whereas the new 82850 engine has a DB9 connector for the data and it has a separate uh, Molex connector for powering the optical engine and also for powering the uh, heater on the inlet tube. The new uh, 82850 engine also requires uh, a change to the I.O. module, the electronics module. Uh, the main change is that we will now have a DB9 connector on the side wall of the new I.O. module. If we compare that to the original module, you can see the original module have, has the uh, Molex connector and the new module has this uh, DB9 connection. What this means is that if you need to replace your existing 8180 optical module with the new 82, uh, 82850 module, you will also need to replace the I.O. module. The pump module uh, remains exactly the same. So there's no change uh, to the pump module, so there's no need uh, to upgrade this or to replace this. It's completely backwards compatible. And there's no change to the uh, inlet system. So the same inlet system uh, can be used for both the original 8180 optical engine and for the new 82850 optical engine. All of the key operational parameters remain exactly the same. So your flow rate will be two liters per minute. The purge flow rate will be exactly the same. Uh, the filters are exactly the same. So if you have an existing uh, 8180 engine bag of filters, then these new filters will be uh, backwards compatible with both engine types. We expect to be making this change approximately uh, October, September of 2018. Uh, from a part code perspective, uh, please check the technical note uh, which will be released along with this video to understand what specific part numbers are going to be affected. Uh, but when you come to order a particle measurement system, you just use the same part code as, you, as you've always been using. Uh, but when it comes to ordering spare parts, uh, you'll need to make sure that you order the correct parts. Uh, so that's a, a little bit of a discussion about the hardware changes. Uh, there are some software changes which accompany uh, these, part, these part changes. So let's just have a quick look and see uh, what changes uh, you can expect to see in the software. 
Okay, so there's been some changes to the module settings uh, as a result of the upgrade to the 82850 engine. So we'll just take a quick look and see what the significant changes will be to the module settings. The H0 setting for the 8180 engine was the millivolt reading following the last auto zero cycle, which happens every 720 minutes. Uh, this H0 setting is no longer used in the 82850 engine, but it will be displayed as zero, and it should remain at zero during the lifetime of the, of the 82850 optical module. The H2 setting uh, for the 8180 engine referred to the calibration certificate setting, which came from MET1. Uh, this is no longer the case with the 82850 engine. Now the H2 setting refers to an error status if the 82850 module is in an error state. So this H0, sorry, H2 parameter should normally read zero. If it's anything other than zero, please contact Aerocoil and we can help you diagnose the problem. The H3 setting was also a calibration certificate setting which came from the MET1 calibration certificate. The H3 setting for the 82850 engine is no longer used. This is also a good time to point out that in fact we no longer need to transfer calibration settings across from the MET1 certificate to our own module settings. The TIMA parameter is the auto calibration frequency in minutes. For the 8180 engine, this used to be set to 720, which means there was an auto zero calibration run twice a day or once every 12 hours. The new 82850 engine calibration cycle is once a day or once every 1440 minutes. You can still change this if you want to initiate an auto zero cycle with the 82850, but you have to return it back to 1440 when you've completed the zero. And there's a uh, instruction for how to do that in the user guide. The TEMR parameter refers to the inlet heater set point for both 8180 engine and 82850. This should normally be set to 45 degrees. It's the bench temperature at which the inlet heater will switch off. The PWML setting uh, is the same for the 8180 engine and for the 82850. This is how you change your cyclone size sharp cut. So if you want to switch from measuring PM10 to measuring PM2.5, you have to edit the setting. And again, there are instructions for doing that uh, in the user guide. And finally, although the HTR parameter is visible, uh, it's not required for either the 8180 or the 82850 engine. So that's a really brief uh, description of the various settings. Uh, again, please refer to your user guide for a more detailed description of what each of these settings do. So there's also been a few changes to the diagnostic reporting channels. So we'll just have a quick look and compare the 8180 diagnostic channels to the 82850 diagnostic channels. First of all, in the 82850, the H0 parameter has been replaced with the runtime hours diagnostic parameter. Remember for the 8180 engine, uh, we had an automatic zero every 12 hours, and when the H0 parameter changed, the H0 value in the module settings would be updated but also in the diagnostics that H0 parameter is reported. This H0 parameter no longer changes for the 82850, so it's been replaced with the runtime hours diagnostic parameter. This tells you how many hours the 82850 optical module has been running for. Uh, we recommend a factory recalibration every two years and this equals approximately 17,520 hours. So this is a really useful diagnostic parameter to help you uh, anticipate when a factory recalibration is due. The laser current diagnostic parameter is the same for the 8180 engine as for the 82850. This laser current diagnostic parameter should be similar to the reported laser current on your MET1 certificate. 
and the bench temperature uh, relates to the temperature of the optical bench and this temperature is used to switch the heated inlet on and off. As with the module settings, I encourage you to check your user guide for a more detailed description of what these diagnostic parameters are. So that's uh, a brief introduction to the diagnostic parameters and uh, I hope uh, everything is clear. Uh, please contact Aeroqual at uh, technical at aeroqual.com if you have any questions regarding the upgrade from the 8180 engine to the 82850 engine. Thanks for listening guys.